Aeromotive sells these engine control module connectors in these in individual components, which makes it easy to remove and install. You have a locking lever, a dust cap, the connector housing or body, and a secondary retention clip, again, to help hold the terminals in place. This particular type of connector is for the engine control module on a Nissan, and it happens to fit the center section. There are two others, and to identify them, they will be color-coded, and I'll show you what I mean by that. In order to remove this connector from the engine control module, you need to release the locking lever. To do that, you press on a small button that holds the lever in place, begin to swing it forward, and it draws the connector out, and you pull. Notice that the secondary clip is brown. In this position, it will be gray, and in this position, it would be black. So when you call in, you might want to say, hey, Aeromotive, we need an engine control module connector for a Nissan. We need the brown one. We need the gray one, or we need the black one. Now, this does look intimidating, but let me break it down for you and show you how easy it is to remove and install this connector. Again, there's specific tooling for a connector like this, but let's break it down and keep it real. We're talking about a field repair now. And the best tool for that, your dollar store screwdriver. So you're going to come up to the connector housing, you're going to lower the locking lever, and then with a little bit of pressure from your thumb, you're going to release two taps. There's one on both sides of this cap. And if you notice here, I don't know if we can get a good shot or not, but there's a locking tab here and one on the other side as well. What we're going to do is take our precision screwdriver and with a little pressure from our thumb, push this lever out of the way, then push this one out of the way and slide the cap off. So let's take a look and see how that's done. There you go. Off comes a dust cap. So we'll place the dust cap to the side. It's in good shape, hasn't been damaged, and that's the key to these. A lot of times during a collision on the front end of these Altimas, the radiator support and the radiator collapse onto the control module and essentially breaking the dust caps and crushing the locking lever. The next thing we want to do is remove the secondary clip. So we have access to the wiring, and again, we're doing this in the field on the vehicle. This is our secondary clip. It's held in twice. Again, maybe a little redundancy so that the cap doesn't slide off when you remove it from the ECM. On this shot, you're going to do two things. One, you're going to squeeze the upper lever, and that is this portion right here and then you're going to lift up the lower level which is this item here so I'm going to go to the connector I'm going to squeeze it and then I'm going to pull it Do you notice how it lifted it came up about a quarter of an inch now you just went past the first locking tab now I'm going to release it a second time and in order to do that, you need to get underneath this lever and lift it up and pull. And then get onto the opposite side, lift it up and pull. Off comes the secondary retention clip. Now you have access to the terminals. Another thing that you could do to help ease the remove and replacement of this connector is remove the locking lever. Those are very simple. They're grooved. So you find the position or neutral position on the connector, and I'll show you what I mean. Neutral is about 90 degrees, and it allows you to pull up and remove the locking levers. As you can see, these are slotted. Here's one slot, and here's the 
grooves for the slot. So you find that neutral position that pops right out. Now look at the accessibility you have. From here on, it's just going to take a lot of patience. What you're going to want to do is take a wire, and it's always best to start with position number one. How do you know what position one is? Look at the connector. They're usually numbered. You can flip it around and look at the back side and look for alphabetical codes or numerical codes, which help you find that position. Pin position is critical. I'm sure I don't have to tell you about that. So once you take a wire out, you should have your replacement connector ready so that you can drop it right into the new connector. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I'm going to grab our first wire lead. I'm going to twist it around my finger. This will give me a little bit of tension and allow me to pull it back. So I have it twisted nice and tight and get a little bit of pressure on it. I'm going to get underneath the locking tab and pull. See that? It's going to come right out. I'm going to take it and immediately put it into my new housing so I don't forget the pin position. Just make sure it's secure. Give it a little bit of tug test and you're ready to go to pin position number two. To save you folks a little bit of time, I went ahead and replaced this connector for you. Swapped each wire one at a time to make sure that I maintain the proper pin position. So let's put this back together again and get this vehicle on the road. So it's going to be a reverse process, right? We have all the terminals in place. We do a tug test, always a good idea, on every terminal that you touched. And now let's reverse the procedure. The next thing we want to do is put our locking lever back in place. So we find the neutral position. We slide it back in, take the opposite side, do the same thing as well. Now we're going to stow it, and then we're going to take our dust cap and slide it back into position. Find the grooves, give it a little bit of a push, and lock it in place. You're ready to go. Maybe a zip tie and a little tape, and this is good as OEM.